Yes, we tested both of the mics. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? We gotta catch that villain. Scooby Squeepy Peeps, Squeepy Deep. Squeep, squeep, deep, deep, deep. We're back, baby. I don't, I don't even know how the song goes. Honestly, it's okay, because I'm just so happy to be seeing you. I haven't seen you in like two weeks. Bro, how you doing? What's with this distance, my guy? What distance? How about you move in? Can you just move in? We'll give you the couch. It'll be nice. Oh, you mean? Move into my house. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Bring Griff. We'll get him a nice little playpen. We would turn this into the content factory. It would be the and content by that, factory. By that, I mean, we just keep making more podcasts because yes. I'm retiring from YouTube. <laughs> And with that, welcome back to Sunday Sauce, ladies and gentlemen, your grandmother's favorite podcast. It's your boy, Original 151, a.k.a. Vinny, fresh back from Georgia. And I am joined with Phil, whose knee is touching my knee, and I'm a little uncomfortable. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing okay. You know, my my neck's a little sore. Ooh. Stretched it too much in yoga yesterday. Yeah, you told me you were doing a bunch of yoga. Let's talk about that for a little bit. What is the uh, the usual scheme that happens during yoga, right. the plan? So first, you st- it's a vinyasa yoga. Which is a flow yoga. I'm going to pretend like I know what that means. Flow yoga vinyasa, yes. of course. It means yes. you're, you're going in and out of different positions, mm. you know, in a constant flow. It's kind of like a workout as opposed to Iyengar yoga, which is like, you know, meditative, mm. right? Obviously, there are some components that are meditative in vinyasa yoga. I'm not a, I'm not a crazy yogi myself, but... I'm, is that what they're called? Yogis? Yeah, yogis and yoginis. That's amazing. Mm. I want to be a yogi. I did hot yoga for a bunch of... Of, uh, of classes two years ago when I was getting really shredded. Someone told me it's really good for burning calories and I did it. And dude, you think about shit from your childhood when you're in like a tree pose and you're just like, wow, why did I get so mad when I was seven and couldn't get that lollipop? Mm. Like you just get transferred back to those times and it's fucking lit. It's not only physical, it's mental. I would argue it's mostly mental. Oh, it's all mental. You're just thinking for an hour. It, well, it is very physical too. Oh like, yeah, for sure. There's so many different like micro movements that you do with your body that like make you feel like a little bitch because you, you can't do them. And you're like, what uh, What do you mean I can't touch my toes? <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, the old lady in the back yeah. is like literally in a pretzel <clears throat> killing it. Yep. Dude, le- I, I want to start doing it again. <laughs> you should come. Well, I want to do hot yoga. Why? Mom, come on, man. I was just up there. Please. Yo, we got to get a studio because you know what my dad told me the other day? I go, dad. Listen, we record... Now, here's phone going off. I go, Dad, we record one podcast a week. When we record, can you guys just, like, leave the house? He goes, it's my fucking house. You want to record your podcast? Go get a fucking studio. He's right. To which I said, you're absolutely right, Dad. I love you. Shout out to my dad. But yeah, I'm going to start doing some hot yoga. It's going to be lit. Now, just because it burns calories, because, like, the heat and I, stuff? I like the feeling... I also like the way my body feels when I'm stretching, when it's really hot, because mm-hmm. I feel like I can actually bend more. I don't know if that's just an illusion. No, it's definitely true. Yeah, it feels it feels really good. On the hamstrings specifically. Yes. Those, but yeah, I just got back. Those thick hammies. Those thick hammies. I just got back from Georgia. And I, I was waiting to tell you all of these stories for the podcast. But um, you know, when I traveled to Georgia, one well, the last couple of times I've been traveling to Georgia, I've been taking first class because I just want to be as comfortable as possible. I really hate flying. Mm-hmm. I'm getting better and better at flying, though. I feel more and more comfortable. So, dude, I'm, I'm looking at the plane on the app where it chooses the seats. And I'm like... This thing's fucking gigantic. I go, what the <laughs> fuck? I've never taken a plane this big. And it was one of those like three row planes. Yep. So there was one on the side, one in the middle, one on the right. So I walk in and usually you go right to the right because the left side of the plane is where the cockpit is. So I walk in, there's a lady standing there going, hello, welcome to first class. May we take your coat? And I turn to the left and there's like, bro, it looked like a hotel. <laughs> there were seats that were no exaggeration, like longer than my wingspan my legs had so much room there was a fucking door so you'll be flying first class every time first class hell yeah dude well (laughs) listen i now when i get my plane tickets i know to only get them on the bigger planes Mm. because the experience was so much better they brought me a hot towel i had a blanket and a pillow pedicure too it was it was fucking lit she was like do you want me to close the door i'm like you're good (laughs) literally didn't see a single person around me i had my own space in the overhead bin it was fucking awesome and then coming home i had a regular size plane Mm. i was like man I miss the big plane. Fortunately, every time I've flown with something like relating to YouTube, right? Like just like little trips here and there. I get put in the very back, like the window seat. So I'm just like cramped up. Yeah. All <laughs> and you're a big three, dude too. Just like, yeah, like a fucking pretzel back yeah. there. And I'm like, really? You couldn't find any other seat in this plane? Like, it was so cool, man. <laughs> I felt like I was in my own isolated chamber. I was taking a bunch of selfies just because mm-hmm. I was so cozy. And there was one setting. I didn't do this because I didn't know if like, I didn't want to feel like an asshole if I was the only one doing this. I don't know the proper etiquette, but there was a button you could press that made the seat into a bed. 
legitimately you could lay down and go to sleep. I would have pressed that shit in a heartbeat. So I just, I went into lounge mode. So I was like this. I wasn't fully all the way back. But next time I'm going to be like, you know what? Fuck it. I have this feature. I'm going to test it. <laughs> you exactly. Know? But yeah, it was a great flight. Coming home, there was a little bit of turbulence. And speaking of the flight, we were with each other when we were at the mall because I was getting all these new hats. Shout out to this champion hat. Champion. Not sponsored, but we, yo. We got to get sponsored. I don't, I'm not like one of those like, yeah, champion's making a comeback. I just... I have it in my drawer. I'm going to wear it. Exactly. Like, I love that crew neck. Is that what you would call that? It's not quite a sweatshirt. Yeah, it's a uh, crew neck sweater. I love just the logos right right above the sleeve. It's freaking clean. Nice nice little details. But yeah, my dumbass booked flights for PM instead of AM when I had to be there Wednesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I had to call up Delta. I always fly Delta, which is awesome. By the way, if you guys have any other recommendations, I know a lot of people like JetBlue. Let me know the benefits. Jet Maybe Blue's I'll do solid. something else. Yeah, Jet, JetBlue is, is pretty sweet. You don't want to fly Spirit. I heard Spirit's not very good. I'm pretty sure uh, it's a comedian. Is it uh, Pete Davidson? Pete Davidson. He's talks, hilarious. Talks bro. about uh, Spirit being a flying Volvo in the in the sky. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I called up. I was like, listen, I I did the wrong flight. Blah blah blah. They were so cool. They're like, no problem. We'll just you know pick your seats. We'll change everything. And literally, there was another two flights that were the same time, just AM instead of PM. So my dumbass just. Click nighttime instead of daytime, but it all worked out great. Did you have to pay extra or anything? It was like two hundred dollars extra just because. Holy shit! Well, just because it was a flight that was leaving in twelve hours mm. when I called. You know what I mean? It was super last minute. I'm sure it wouldn't have been that much if I would have booked it the same day that I booked the nighttime ones. But um, I'm able to perfectly navigate JFK by myself now. Hell yeah! I know for you guys listening, you're like Vinny, what the fuck? Listen, I had a hard time going places by myself. A year and a half ago. This is big steps for me. You want the best experience at an airport? Fuck yeah, I do. Sign up for Clear. I saw that. Bro, there were the little stations, right? You skip it. everything. I have it. Now, do you have to go through TSA with that as well? Or is it you just... You cut to the front of the line. So sick. Yep. Yeah, they scan your eye. That's crazy. You just go up, and then you're like, right this way, sir. Yeah, that's and a futuristic You literally shit. look at the peasants. You're like, goodbye, people. And you go straight to the fucking security. And I, I gotta tell you guys, too. For me, take the plane out of it. Getting the uh, first class ticket... With Delta, I don't know if this is with any other airlines, but you get this thing called Sky Priority, and you literally get to cut every line. In my opinion, that's worth the extra money than just the seat alone. Dude, you, the lines, just keep going like this, keep going like this. You show them the barcode for the Sky Priority, they're like, what? Right this way, like mm -hmm. you said. You literally go to a straight line. I literally wait in the airport before the lounge area, or the, the, the what was it called, the deck? The gate. The gate. The gate. <laughs> the deck. What am I, on a ship? <laughs> We got to go on a cruise. No, but seriously, <laughs> I'm online and shit like that for maybe 15 minutes, and then I'm already at the gate chilling, and I can just get my mind right for the torture that is about to ensue. There, there are some things in life you want to pay the premium for. For sure. I think it's definitely worth it. That's Airport just is one of them. Yeah. Dude, there's just so many. And the, the Atlanta <clears throat> airport is a fucking nightmare. Really? You have to take a train. It's technically like a subway, but they call it the plane train. You get off, at least with Delta, you get off, and you have to get on this subway or train, whatever the fuck you want to call it, because literally you won't... If you walked, it would take you probably an hour to get to the other side of the airport. Gotta get you a posted board. It's crazy. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> but it's crazy, too, because the fucking thing's like, Neow! it goes super fast. I don't want to touch the bar, so Gotta I'm just, like, trying to stagger my ground with my quadriceps. Dude, when I'm on subways in New York City, it's just, like... So gross. There's a 50% chance that I will topple over at any point. And, and take out three people <laughs> with you. Like, seven people, dude. Dude, you know what I always... Not wonder, but I think about this. Whenever I'm going up an escalator, specifically coming out of Penn Station in the city, mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, if that guy falled right now, if he <laughs> fell, not fall, fall isn't a word. If he fell back, we are all dying. It's an avalanche. It's yeah. literally a tally ho! Just bam, everyone's getting fucked. Mm -hmm. That would that would be brutal. Yeah. So you got to be careful when you're going up escalators <laughs> is the lesson, I suppose. But I do like those things in the airport that... They're like escalators, but with no stairs. And you just feel like you're walking super fucking fast. <laughs> the hyperspeed. Yeah, the dude. Boost. I need one of those in my fucking house. Mm -hmm. That's the shit right there, bro. It's clean. When's the last time you traveled? I feel like I've been traveling so much more. Um, I went to San Diego in the summer. I went to San North Diego. Carolina in the summer. Mm. North Carolina. When are we going away? We need a vacation. Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> Whatever you want. Where can we go? Florida. Like, my family has a house in Florida. I'm but. down for Florida. Like, I'm also down for Cali. Would you want to go to San Francisco? Because I want to go hang with my friend Barb. Never been. It's beautiful. That's they have cool. little trolleys that go up these really steep like streets that you're like, we're gonna die right now. We but should. It, you don't. We should do a whole California like week. Start San Francisco, yep. L.A., San Diego. What else is there? Laguna. Laguna. I've never heard of that in my entire life, but I'm down for some Laguna. Just picture like the SpongeBob voice, like 
Lagoon. Yeah. <laughs> Goo Lagoon. Yeah. Pretty I much that. It. You know what else I love? The fact that we're finally going out tonight. We haven't been out in three weeks, I think. Mm. I am... When I tell you guys that I'm fucking fiending, <laughs> fiending to go out with my boys, facts. I am so excited. I don't care where we go. I don't care if we go to the nest. I don't care if we go to the city. Hell, I'll go to fucking Philadelphia tonight. Let's I'll take to a Mars. road trip. I'll go to Mars. I'll I'll sit in my bed. I'll fucking get drunk in my bed. As long as I'm with my boys, like I'm ready tonight, facts. man. Speaking of Mars, have you heard Elon Musk's debut single? I saw he was in the studio. I didn't listen to it. Is it good? It's not bad. Is it a rap song? No, it's like an EDM song. This His man name is making... Elon, quotations, EDM, and quotations, Musk. Musk? <laughs> That's incredible. Mm-hmm. That is literally, I can't wait to listen to it. I'll give you guys my in-depth review. Um, one thing that we can review is the Jake Paul, a Nissan Gib fight. Yes. Which, Jesus Christmas, man. <laughs> where, where do we begin with this? I was I was rooting for a seven-figure <laughs> Gibber. <laughs> We were texting before the fight. Phil's like, trust me, he's got legs. I'm like, bro, Jake's going to kill this kid. Literally in the first like 10 seconds, we're going back and forth because we usually watch the fights together. <laughs> but we both had a really long day and we were both just like, all right, let's just go home and watch whatever. And uh, yeah, within like the first 25 seconds is probably when I realized like, yo, this guy, Gib, <laughs> what, what's with the leapfrog action? What was going on there? <laughs> Some of the fucking jokes and comments. It's like, oh God. Gib was inputting cheat codes, like left, left, right, <laughs> down, down. <laughs> Did you see the one where it was like, Deji, uh, lost, and Nissan Gib, lost, KSI, <laughs> all right, I'll do it myself, the yes. Thanos reference, so funny. I'm telling you right now, though, I am glad with the way it played out, because now we get to have Jake versus KSI, redemption for Logan losing, like, this is a sick story arc, I'm ready for it, man. Dude, KSI is the Thanos in this situation. I gotta tell you... One good thing about all this, there's many good things about this whole YouTuber boxing thing, but one thing that stands out to me is it's, it introduces you to creators that you may have not watched before. I'm a huge KSI fan now. He is hilarious. He's good. And and I just, I love his swagger. I love the fact that, you know, coming up, he was just the guy that played FIFA. And now yep. he's making music with Rick Ross, which by the way, Down Like That is such a good song. Little if you've baby. ever heard it. It's amazing. Why you gotta go? <laughs> like go little babies. Let me down like, like these that. are A-list rappers. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> well, he's legit, man. He has he has a really good flow. Maybe one day I'll make a song with KSI. Speaking of which, my sleep block went really well. Thank you guys for all you guys that were there. We were live for fourteen and a half hours. Holy shit! It was crazy, man. <laughs> Did I was, you take bathroom ba- breaks? Yeah, I I literally only went to the bathroom I think like four times in that fourteen hour. Were you period. hydrating? Yeah, I drank a lot of water. My friends got me Chick-fil-A, and I was eating healthy while I was in Georgia. And then, honestly, there came to, like, six hours into the stream, and I go, I go, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not going to eat <laughs> lettuce during this. I'm yeah. like, go to Chick-fil-A if you can. Get me five sandwiches. They were like, five sandwiches? I'm like, yeah, I want to experience this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chick-fil-A is coming up on me right now from a week and a half ago. I can't even begin to tell you how delicious it was. Chick-fil-A is god tier in terms of fast food. When I say it slapped... It slapped cheeks, my, my guy. My guy, it slapped my cheeks. I was sitting there eating the burger and I was, or sandwich, Chicken whatever the sandwich. fuck it is. Yeah. And I, I ate two on stream. I think I ate two on stream and I saved the rest for later. Mm-hmm. And I just went to town. It's it fantastic. Was, there's nothing better than post 14 hour work day. And then you just have amazing and delicious, incredible foods yep. at your disposal. Have you had the Chick-fil-A sauce? I did not. I'm a, I'm a ketchup guy through and through. <laughs> You don't like ketchup? Check-up. You're a piece I said of check shit. Up. Piece ketchup of shit. is nauseating. I'm, I'm dead ass. I'm getting every episode. I find out something about you that you just don't agree with me, and I'm getting sick of right, this. Let's, let's talk about some condiments really quickly. Let's go ahead. Barbecue sauce is fire. It's the best. Like, okay, good. We're on the same. People page. are gonna be like, oh, that's ketchup based." You know, eat my ass. Yeah, eat his ass. It's second of all, eat his fucking ass. Put guys. some barbecue sauce on my ass and then eat it. There you go. Tell him. Phil. I said it. All right. What's the next one? Mayo. Do you like mayo? You don't like mayo. Mayo. Can rot in a ditch I with love, ketchup. I love mayo. Disgusting. And and if you t- you know what's interesting though? No, I was gonna say there there's there are these sandwiches that me and Phil get whenever we're really intoxicated. They're called bindis, mm-hmm. and it's Russian dressing with chicken cutlets and all this. And I was gonna say, well, Russian dressing is ketchup and mayo mixed. I'm pretty sure, but you get it with barbecue sauce. Yep. You son of a bitch. So you're right. You're staying consistent <laughs> yep, at least. It's barbecue sauce all the way. I'll put barbecue sauce on my titties. <laughs> Do you remember when we went to the Bindi place and uh, and there were the the people that knew you in there? Mm-hmm. And then the one kid was hammered and like fell over the counter, <laughs> yeah. dude. 
it was it was the definition of like everyone's drunk at the end of the night and we're chilling at this place and it was just like a shit show it was so funny i could not believe how many kids were in that it was like, crazy. little bodega yeah at 4 a.m hey phil are you feeling on? and like knew who we were <laughs> like what the fuck dude i i i love 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 when you guys notice us out and about and you come say hi i was at the nest i think i told you this in a previous episode but someone recognized me at the nest and we took a shot together and mm. it was literally the coolest thing ever. I was at Adelphi and I got recognized twice on Thursday, mm. like in the same day. That's awesome. One, like I, I know when people are looking at me. Yeah, like, you feel that. Yeah, but like it's, you feel it's them breathing. Type on. of stare that's just like, do mm. I? Is that fair? <laughs> Can I go say what's It's up? really like I'm not. I'm pretty recognizable. Like the hair, the dot, like even my computer. The like, sheer mass. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's. Be, yeah, the computer too. Who has a MacBook Air these days? Yeah, I know. Literally, it's fucking. Who has guy. a toaster oven with stickers on it? I'm not even joking, guys. I've literally vividly pictured in my brain me just breaking it in half. So he has to get a new computer. <laughs> I can't take this fucking thing anymore. Uh, he's old, reliable. He's he is old, reliable. Speaking of old, reliable, we're rocking it today. <laughs> I'm gonna look so swagged, swagged out tonight for this. For wherever the fuck we go. Yes. I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be it's gonna be lit. I'm gonna have on a fresh pair of pants. New shoes. Is it rainy? Is it raining out? It's a little wet outside. A little damp. A little moist. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a problem, Phil. My new shoes came in, the ones I ordered after Griff uh, ate my, uh, what's it called? The at, at, uh, Aglet. Aglet, yes. Mm -hmm. um, they came in, they're looking good. What color are they? They're all black with a red stripe instead of oh. the white stripe. So instead of the Oreos now, we have the red pair. And we went to the mall the day I left for... Uh, I was gonna say but the day before I left for Delta the day before I left for Georgia and we were in the store called JD I think it was called dude they renamed it was was it Foot Locker I think it was Foot Locker I'm gonna google that yeah I'm pretty sure when you type in JD Foot Locker pops up if I remember correctly but yeah I was looking up at like the main stand they had a pair of Yeezys for sale for retail which I you never see you know what I mean and they were the neon pair the new ones that dropped I think in December so I was like fuck it how much are these they were for retail price I bought them it was like a nice impulse buy I felt really good about it, you know? Bro, I don't I don't know what JD is. Yeah, so shout out JD. <laughs> if you guys want to sponsor us, you random sneaker store the in the mall that carries JD Yeezys. JD Sports, man? Joey D, my boy from high school. Shout <laughs> Joey out Joey. Joey Diaz. Joey D, my boy. Yo, Joey Diaz is fucking hilarious. Hey, let me yeah. tell you something, cocksucker. <laughs> man, Dude. sounds like he just ate cigarettes. <laughs> Literally. And they're still in his throat. Yes. But yeah, Georgia was fun. Um, one thing that I really wanted to talk about briefly... Um, you guys know, and you know this especially, whenever I go to Georgia, whenever I travel in general, by like the third day, I'm full on anxious, ready to come home, bugging out, mental health mm -hmm. is scattered all over the place, I feel like shit, I'm just like, I need my bed, I swear to you, I don't know what was different about this time, not a single ounce of doubt, no anxiety, no Hell stress, yeah. no urge to go home, like when the day came to come home, I was excited to go home, but I wasn't like fiending for it. Was completely and utterly content, was comfortable. Shout out to Dylan for letting me stay with him. United Gamer, you guys know him, you love him. It was literally like, it was just so good for my mental health because Hell I was yeah. like, now I feel like I can travel more and not be worried to stay an extra two days because the last time I went, dude, I was, by the third day, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, get me out of here. Like, I was ready to come home, dude, this time. And my friends were so happy too. They were like, dude, like you felt so cozy you want to hang with us yeah this it, time. it was it was dope so that was it was a great trip and you know it makes me more comfortable to travel more as the as the year goes on it's and like a muscle it really is the more you exercise it you beat it down the it comes stronger, stronger you get speaking of which i will be going to the gym after this recording hell yeah what are you, what are you doing today? today i'm training some back although i hit some chest yesterday and i don't know how but my back is sore mm. um i hit chest hard yesterday though for the first time in a while was because my shoulder feels better better mm -hmm. now i did some uh some 80 pounds on the dumbbell Flat dumbbell press. Dup, 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 dup. It was nice, bro. You feel that shit marinating in I was chest? doing. I was going for a little bit of a different uh, approach this time. Usually, I'll go a lot heavier, right. and I'll just do six. What I did yesterday was do eight, and I went down with a one, two, three, mm, Some bodybuilder count. One, two. A little eccentric, concentric action. It was action. beautiful, dude. Hell and yeah. I, I let out a little grunt when I threw the dumbbells down, <laughs> like a... Ugh. It was fucking... It was mint. Yeah. Been doing cardio a lot. Same. So that's good. What, what's cardio are you doing? Stairmaster? I like to switch it up. So I've been doing 15 elliptical, 15 Stairmaster. And when I get on the Stairmaster, I'm like, I'm at like an 8 to 10 pace. I'm oh, fucking, I'm, I'm rolling on You're that shit. You're fucking climbing those stairs. Climbing like a fucking climber. Like a gazelle. <laughs> like a Bro, gazelle. Have you, no, 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 not a gazelle. Have you seen like those mountain goat things? I was just about to say mountain goat. Have They're you crazy. seen, there's like one video on YouTube that has like 80 million views of this fucking thing on like, <laughs> liter literally, it's like vertical. And he's just like 
climbing up and down it like it's nothing. What do they just have like really strong hooks on their hooves? I, like how do they some muscular fucking adaptation? We need to evolve to do that. <laughs> yeah, By the way, thank you guys so much for the love on the previous episode because. Dude, every week I feel like I read more comments like, yo, this is getting better and better. It, It's just, it's so dope seeing you guys love something that we're creating. And the Spotify and the Apple podcast listeners are just going up every week. I don't even know how that's happening, but it is. Spotify is where it's at. Spotify is sick. Okay. I've been Spotify or uh, Apple Music? Spotify. 100%. The UI is 10 times better. I, I got introduced to Spotify one night uh, in high school. I believe I was a junior. And I, I will probably never switch platforms ever again. I've been a premium member since I think 2013, 2014. I love it. I fucking love it, man. It's so good. It's so interesting that streaming took over purchasing and downloading. Because I remember there was a time where you would either buy the CD, obviously. That was when we were way younger. And then there was a time where you would buy it on iTunes, download it, and then put it on your iPhone, iPod, whatever. And then I remember Microsoft came out with Zune. I don't know if you remember Zune, but that was subscription-based. Yes, I do remember yeah. Zune. <laughs> yeah, so Zune came out, everyone was like, what the fuck, subscription-based? Absolutely not. And then it came back again. Mm -hmm. Because now, like, people would rather pay, I don't even know what Spotify is, $10 a month? It's like 12 at 12 yeah, whatever it is. And then uh, you literally get every, essentially every artist. I mean, I know there's a couple artists. I don't think Taylor Swift's on there. Jay-Z wasn't on there Taylor for a Swift long time. Taylor Swift is definitely on there. I don't think she is. We, we need a fact checker. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But Jay-Z wasn't on for the longest, and he got added back in December. Because he was on Tidal. Yeah, Tidal. What the fuck is Tidal? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's not on it. At least she wasn't for a while. She's, she, she's on it. Is she on there? Yeah, dude. What the fuck? They must have she's added got, her back. She's got a, a, you know, a small, humble 35 million monthly listeners. That's insane. And you know, how, you know what's crazy, though? If you're an independent artist, and you're on Spotify, and you're pulling numbers like that, you are making so much money... Mm -hmm. The problem is if you're a, if you're on a label, I don't know what I mean. I'm sure every artist has different deals, whatever. But I would assume the label keeps a lot of the streaming money, probably, which is so sad to, to think about. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this in the shower the other day. It's like I don't know why I had to need the I don't know why I felt the need to tell you I was in the shower when I was thinking about this. But anyway, shower thoughts, shower thoughts, shower thoughts are great. Um, yeah. Eminem came out at like the perfect time when it came to CD sales because, dude, if you think about nowadays. When he put out his new album, I think hard album sales, it was like 275,000, which is still insane mm -hmm. for CDs. Cause like, when's the last time you bought a CD? You know what I'm saying? I don't think I've ever bought a CD. Exactly. Um, when he came out with like the Eminem show, I'm pretty sure it sold like 3 million <clears throat> copies in like a week. Shit's nuts. In a week. So CDs were huge. Now they're pretty much dying out. But even his streaming numbers, I think he's grossed over 200 million Spotify streams since the album dropped. Holy fuck. Think about how crazy that is. 200 million. It's insane. Streaming is also like sick for artists that are like on the come up. Yeah, yeah. If you get put in a playlist, like, mm, like the TikTok that's true. playlist, I didn't even think of that. So many artists are just exploding because of this one TikTok playlist. Dude, think about that song that. Yeah, the box. By Rob. Pull the box the box. Dude, that song is fucking mm -hmm. awesome. And it literally, I mean, I'm sure he was big before TikTok, obviously, but TikTok propelled that song to there's, another level. There's an incentive to make your songs memeable and catchy. Yep, that's you it. You know what I'm saying? Because there are so many songs like, why don't you say so? Doja Didn't Cat? Even, I don't even know what song that is, but I know it because of Say TikTok. So by Doja Cat. Yeah, it's a great song. I'm a human Shazam. Are you really? Yeah. Shazam was like one of the greatest. You ever see someone like humming into their phone trying to get the song? I've tried it so many so times. So fucking funny, man. That's a great <laughs> app. Do you ever do you have ever jailbroken your iPhone? Yeah. Do you remember that back in the day? Oh, yeah. I don't know why Shazam made me think of that, but I remember back in the day... <laughs> getting like the iPod touch and jailbreaking it so that like my slider was a Mountain Dew can. What the fuck? Like remember the old slide to yeah. unlock, not the swipe to unlock? Mm -hmm. It used to be, for those of you guys that are younger, it was literally like this bar with a little arrow and you could change that to any like, graphic you want mm -hmm. when you would jailbreak. I'm pretty sure you can still jailbreak now and the, and the shit that you can do when you jailbreak now is insane. I remember on the jailbreaks, there was a app called like Cydia. Wasn't it called Cydia? And you could like yep. get... And get I did it to get apps for free. Yeah. Like fucking dumb apps, like doodle jump and shit. Doodle jump is the shit. <laughs> and I remember um, before Cydia, there was installer.app. That was like the OG jailbreak. Mm -hmm. That shit was like, that was, that was lit. Yeah. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just, man, I'm such a, like a, a nerd for tech. Like I, I just, I love, I love Apple. I know people, <laughs> I know people love the shit on Apple, but I really do love Apple. Why? Why? Well, Dude, okay, I, I get like they're pretty and they got the nice UIs, right? This is why. When you have, and, and people don't understand this that are on the outside. When you have an iPhone, 
an iPad, a MacBook, a fucking AirPods. Mm -hmm. When you have all of the products together, it's unstoppable. Because I could be having a conversation on my MacBook. I have to go grab my phone, mm -hmm. continue the conversation. The continuity is insane. I can copy and paste something on my Mac, go to my phone, paste it. It's all... When you're in that ecosystem, it just works great. And then when you're in the ecosystem with other people, it's great. Like, iMessage to this day, I don't care what anybody says. It's the best thing. It, it's, it's fucking amazing. When I see that green bubble of text, like the SMS message. Oh. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. I hate it. I know. I fucking hate it. Especially for me, because I'm in the basement. When I text someone with Android, like my grandma, I keep telling her, I'm like, you have to get an iPhone. I can't text her from the basement because there's no service yeah. down here. It's just trash. Trash. Literal trash. But yeah, I just, man, I remember like when the first iPhone came out, I went to the pizzeria and I just fucking grinded. <laughs> I grinded to save up enough money to get it. Because at the time when that one came out, I think it was like, I think it was like $500. It might have been 1000 I don't remember, but for the time that it came out for a phone, it made no sense mm -hmm. how much money it cost. It was fucking crazy. But dude, I wanted it so bad and it replaced my iPod. That's also crazy that we've witnessed the birth and death of a product in our lifetimes. <laughs> the iPod. The iPod was the biggest thing ever. And I know people sometimes tell me, well, it didn't really die because it got moved over to, to phones and stuff. But I mean, the iPod itself, they still sell iPod touches, mm -hmm. but you'd rather just buy an iPhone. Yeah. Because it's around the same price you can, and you get so much more features. There's iMessage on the iPod Touch. Oh, right? yeah. Yes, and the iPad. You can, like, too. text. <laughs> it's amazing. However, if you compare Apple's, like, specs and their price to what you can build on a computer, it fucking obliterates Apple. Well, the... Th <sighs> Obliterate. This, like, there's, this, it's not a question. This talk drives me crazy because no, I've listen, had it with listen, so listen. many people. An editing monster and PC that, like, pl is for gaming destroys any Mac. You can't game on a Mac. See, I just, and again, I'm not a computer person that heavily, but I would argue, in my opinion, the Mac OS is way better than Windows. That's just me. So it's like, I just, I like what I like. And the one thing that drives me crazy about the whole Mac versus PC debate is like, people are always like, eh, Apple's so overpriced, eh. So don't fucking buy it. This is, I've mentioned this before. I'm pretty sure on the podcast I've mentioned this before. It's like, you don't have to hate on people that do like to buy the Apple stuff. I get it. You're right. It is overpriced for what you're getting for what you're getting but me personally the experience that i have with apple products like i've i've been making content on my macbook mm -hmm. and then going over to the imac for literally six years yeah now, and no, i will probably never change obviously both have their ups and downs but yeah. like you cannot deny that like pc you just have so much more power <laughs> like <laughs> <clears throat> Dude, you can't run any games on a Mac. Yeah, you can now. They're trash. You can now. It's fucking glitchy. You get, you get like 20 well, FPS. Well, I'm not a P PC gamer, so like I don't give a shit about that. I just need fast render times, which mm. I don't even render my videos anymore. Have I told you about my new setup? So back in the day, not back in the day, literally last year, <laughs> what I would have to do is I would record <clears throat> my face cam and I would record my desktop all with one program, mm -hmm. ScreenFlow. I still use it sometimes. Or I still use it all the time, actually, to help set up the podcast and the stuff audio, like that. The audio, right? The audio. So here's the thing. I would have to render those files. So the rendering of a 30 minute video in like full quality of the face cam and the gameplay, the gameplay would take like 10 minutes, no mm -hmm. problem. The face cam though, at full like 1080p, 60 FPS would take like 45 minutes. <laughs> so now I use OBS and I have the settings perfect that while it's recording, it's rendering. Mm -hmm. So when you're done and you click stop record, you have the two files and you literally just are ready to send them off to the editor. That's pretty sick. Dude. I can't even tell you how convenient it is, especially when you're bulk recording. Because when I used to bulk record, I remember before I went to North Carolina, me and Dylan had to bulk record like 10 videos. I had to render all those videos before I sent them to the editors. Now it's just like, oh, they're done? In the folder, Google Sick. Drive. In the folder, Google Drive. <laughs> Saves me so much time, energy, effort. It's amazing. So that's that's pretty dope. If I try to render a video on this... It'll explode. It'll literally combust. It'll go... Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Shit <laughs> itself. I remember, like, my computer literally broke when I tried to fucking render this podcast one time. So what's, what's the ultimate... What, are you going to keep using this till it literally just dies? Are you just trying to keep going till all the wheels fall off? Is that the plan? <laughs> I don't even know, dude. You just, you, you just Back, like having this When I start making computer? videos again, you know, I'll buy a new computer. So, okay, yeah, give us a little preview. When's the next video coming out? Um, two weeks. Two weeks. Not even. Okay. I'm excited. I'm I, looking have, forward I have two to videos it. in the works. Two... Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, excuse two. me, yeah. original 151 with the maybe, daily maybe uploads? Three, maybe three. Maybe three. Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, it's, it's a... It's now, a, when are these dropping? Is it like bam, 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 or is it like bam, bam, bam? It might be like bam, 
Bam. Bam. It's equally spaced out. Damn, son. Yeah. I want to make a challenge with you. <laughs> like, I want us to have some sort of challenge where, like, if you drop two videos in a month, you get a prize. Okay. Let's I'm go. trying to think what we should do. <laughs> I feel like you'd look sick in a pair of Yeezys. I'm not wearing Yeezys. You wouldn't wear Yeezys? No. Not even the boots? Those are so your uh, style. I wear the boots. The 750s you would rock. All blacked out like the ones I have in there. I would wear those. Okay. All right, I'll tell you what. If you can if you can do three videos in one month. <sighs> that's pushing it. <laughs> that's You got a little bit over a week for each video. <gasps> three videos in a month. I'll get you a pair of 750s for your birthday Listen, in April. At this rate. Do you see the ad revenue for fucking January? It's very bad. <laughs> I've never experienced this. It's La very bad. Last year, it wasn't like this for me. I think January was like my biggest month. It you well, you know what it is for you around that time was probably when you started really pulling views. So mm. for you, the revenue was still more because it was more traction. But yeah, January is always trash. That's why you see YouTubers always going on like little vacations. That's what when, I'm doing right now. Yeah, you know, you're <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a break. Taking it back. I'm pretty sure it starts to get good again around February, March. Um, and then by like April, May, you're chilling. It's, it's Can't wait to... to be chill. Dude, when I graduate college, <laughs> holy shit, it's going to be bliss. I hope so, man. It is. What you should do and be strategic, December revenue is fucking out of this world. Knowing you, you should start in fucking June. Just get like three videos in the back burner. Just oh, leave there's going to be like And then when videos. December hits, <laughs> <laughs> sweeps, it'll be crazy. How about this? I don't record any, well, I record like 20 videos, right? Oof. I don't post them. Until December of 2020. <laughs> yeah. Just every day. That's totally a good idea. To Merry take a, Christmas, you filthy fucking animals. Take a animals. one year break and then do the 12 days of Christmas every day in December. Dude, some people post once a month and have fucking like 20 million subs. Phil, you know, if you post it once a month, I wouldn't even give you shit for that <laughs> statement. But it's not even once a month, Phil. And okay. I understand you're busy. I understand the research takes a lot of time. And you don't want to hear this from me again. But <laughs> God damn it, sweet niblets. Get on the ball. Bro. Classes this semester? Let me talk, tell you about some classes. Oh, here he goes. Let's hear it. Senior thesis seminar? That class sucks. <laughs> but take uh, it from me, I didn't do shit the entire semester. Knock that bitch out in the last night. I'm not trying to do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Horrible idea. I'm not pages. recommending it at all. It's fucking shit. Mm. But you got this. What are you going to write about? YouTube, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Or social media, like the general effects, positive versus negative. You can read mine if you want for some ideas if you need. Hell yeah. Who's your teacher for that? Don't say their last name. The previous chair. No, or the chair. We talked about same, that. Same yes. teacher. Yes, yes. She's dope. She's dope. But yeah, that class is interesting. How does she have it structured? Do you have to hand in a certain amount of pages each week? I got like a three-page proposal, two on Wednesday. <laughs> you know what I did in that class? Literally, not even joking, would respond to YouTube comments. That was my <laughs> that was my time frame when I was in that class to just answer as many comments as possible. Bro, freshman year at Fordham, I was sitting in class. Oh, God. <laughs> My parents would be like, we paid all that fucking money. <laughs> For you to doodle? <laughs> to literally, I would go on people's YouTube channels and self-promo myself. <laughs> You're a self-promo <laughs> scum? Hell yeah, dude. Ew! Bro, you, you gotta get out there. Oh, I'm, that... I've thrown up, pretend throw up a lot of times in this podcast. That almost actually came up right there. Listen. Self-promo scum. <laughs> Unbelievable. What was Absolutely. your What was your hook? Hey, guys, come, yep. come check out my fitness yep. content. Yep. <laughs> Ew. Literally. Ew. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I used to just respond to comments, like every comment in, in class, and then... You see, I didn't have any comments. <laughs> mm. Well, listen, man, it, I, didn't, I never felt bad about it because going through college, obviously, yes, I wanted to, you know, apply myself the best that I could, but my baby for the last six years has been YouTube. So, mm. like, that's always my top priority. You've been at YouTube for six years? It's crazy, right? Shit. This is my, this is my six year anniversary. My six year anniversary is actually in, I'm pretty sure it's February 14th. I'm at three. I gotta double check this because it'll <clears throat> drive me crazy. I'm pretty sure February 14th. Three years? Oh, you little baby? That's Valentine's Day. It's February 16th. How did I fuck that up? <laughs> February 16th is gonna be my six year anniversary. Did you should get that tattooed on your lower lip. <laughs> Just, yeah, we, hey, guys. <laughs> we yeah, we got to do something lit for, for six years. My goal is to hit a million subs before 10 years. That's my goal. Oh, that's doable. And we're, we're creeping up on 170 on my main channel right now. Bro, you got the consistency. You got the quality. It's it's a matter of... Renegade. Renegade. Of blowing. You renegade. know what I'm saying? We got it. I have some cool ideas I want to tell you about, too. Like, different videos uh, that focus on, like, reaching a wide variety it's of uh, Got to break audience. it down facts i think i'm gonna start a series where i like call out 
um, people in the fitness industry. Yep. I'm going to call it fitness flap. Yeah. It's going to be huge. <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> You know what I started noticing, by the way? What did you start noticing, by and the way? And don't think we don't see it, motherfuckers, because we do. But whenever you do your community posts, how the people love to just shit talk, the people yep. that haven't, uh, the people that leave comments on that on those posts, I've noticed now the people that fuck with the podcast are starting to show up oh, too. And they're like, you yeah. guys you guys aren't even giving it a fucking chance. They defend <laughs> us. It's lit. And listen, we've said it before. We'll say it again. We're not for everybody. We get it. But a lot of you motherfuckers just blindly hate on those posts. Bro. And you all need to suck a fat dick. We're a fungus together. We're, we're like spores. I love those comments. Spores. I love it. And people appreciate the self-aware of, you know, a lot of people might think I'm annoying, but you give me a chance. You might like me. I've seen a lot of comments on my new Pokemon videos too, because me and my friends are doing that four-way series where we all race against each other and mm -hmm. we film that, that 70 show theme oh, opening, that was, that was cool. which was fucking lit. Shout out to everyone involved with that. And people leave comments like, you know, you, you're, you guys were right. When I first watched, you're annoying. But I've watched continuously, and now I'm not here for the gameplay. At I'm here first, for the I really fucking hated you. Yeah, it's like the backhanded compliments. I appreciate them, because at least that shows me that people are investing enough to see the other side of things. Mm -hmm. Because, like we said, again, you know, people could stay around for five episodes and still hate you, and that's cool. But more so than not, I feel like if you do chill for a while, and you stay, and you give us a shot, you'll enjoy it. Mm. 100%. You, you see uh, Logan Paul? potentially be a MMA fighter now. Oh, really? Is, yeah. that, is that He wants to fight this one guy. I mm. think his name's JMX. JMX. Why does that sound familiar, actually? He's is a, he a Russian dude? He's a YouTuber. Oh, he's a YouTuber. He's a Russian YouTuber, right? I have no idea. Because I think they talked about that on, on Impulsive. Um, yeah, his vlogs that are that are back now, very David Dobrik-esque. I'm impressed. They're fucking sick. They are pretty sick. And I was, I was, you know, I never me. thought I, I would say that. I've been on the, be my balls are so itchy, but I don't want to itch them right now, guys, because we're on camera, <laughs> yeah, I but I guess, you. yeah, thanks. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, I've been on the bandwagon for a while now, you know this, and now these vlogs are like the six minute super fast takes. They're, they're fucking dope. Did you see the girl that spit on him? Yeah, that, he handled it like a champ, too. Bro. He was just like, listen, I got nothing below for you. Don't spit on people. Yeah. I was like, wow, Logan, that's, that's fucking admirable. Mm. Real talk. I don't know what the fuck I would have did. I probably would have snapped. <laughs> you would have saw Reddit. The girls would have been decapitated. Dude, I mean, that's to make this perfectly and abundantly clear. I would never put my hands on a girl, but like you spit in someone's face, like that, there that, would be some screaming. Isn't that assault? Can we get a lawyer down I here? I think there. I think it actually is some sort of it's, it's chemical it's, warfare at that it's, point. It's disgusting. Um, but yeah, there would be some what the fuck? Like there would be some <laughs> of that, you know? Nothing physical, but I would definitely lose my mind. He was just like. Yo, I got nothing but love for you. That's I'd cool. fucking lick it to assert my dominance. Oh, that's creepy. Uh, oh, you like that? Mm, thank you. I feel like you'd be pretty... <laughs> I feel like if a guy spit on you, you'd fucking... They'd be done. <laughs> but if a girl spit on you, you might just be like... Ha, ha, ha. What's like, that thing in Mario? Like the, the big stone? Like the, uh, oh, yeah, the thwomps. Uh, I would have thomped someone. <laughs> oh, yeah, thwomp to the max for sure. <laughs> just... Uh, I don't even know... That was literally the definition of a hate comment in real life. Mm. Like that girl just thought it would be funny to spit on him. Yeah. Which is so ridiculous. Gave him a vlog, though. Did give him some vlog content. That vlog was sick, too. By the way, I love the fact that Mike and Lana Rhodes are now, like, an item. It's, it's so fucking funny, I dude. think it's I think it's definitely fabricated. Well, I think, like, they like each other, but yeah. I, I think that they strategically came together for the views. It's smart. They're building their squad like David Dobrik, if I you've noticed that. I wouldn't be surprised if you're right, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they actually end up dating. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mike, I love Mike. Here's He's, like, my favorite in the group. Would you be able to date a porn star? I I don't know. It would it would have to depend like on the bond that me and her had. You hey, know honey, what I'm saying? How was work today? Oh, it was great. Got fucked by three dudes today. I pro Holy I'll be honest, with you, I probably wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, but if you were like were in love with them, madly in love, and you were willing to to, I don't know. What the fuck is love at that point, my guy? I mean, it it is their job. I date a male porn star. Yeah, good for you. Good for you, Phil. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't really be able to fully answer that unless I was in that situation, but probably not, I mm -hmm. would say. I think most people would say probably not, but for those of you guys that could, that's that's rad. The reason I bring that up is because uh, Mike was just hanging out with Greg Lansky. Have you mm. ever seen that guy? I don't think so. He's like the Dan Bolzarian of the adult film industry. Okay, gotcha. Is he bald? Balding. Okay. He started Vixen. Got you. you okay. know what Vixen is? That, yeah, I, he, he was talking about how they, they went to the Vixen party. They yeah. went to the Vixen party with that guy that does the voices like, Oh God, here yeah. comes the fullback <laughs> coming in hot with a... Holy with fucking his, shit. With his dick hanging out of his pants. <laughs> that guy's fucking hilarious. I forget the guy's name. But anyway. It, I, it's, it's just weird seeing that like YouTubers... Hang out with adult film stars. Just like 
so I don't know. Like the lines are blurred with like it used to be like you know rappers, celebrities, YouTubers, whatever the fuck. Now it's just like YouTube's powerful as shit. Well, the thing is, it's not even just YouTube; it's just following in general. Like mm-hmm. if you have a following, which a lot of the porn stars do, and then I mean a following is a following, no matter what avenue you went down. If you have a following, if you have clout, you know it's like it's a, a, we're living in a dystopia. It's interesting. It's definitely an interesting time because we're basing each other's worth off of each other's followers that's not not everyone that's deep but like come on it's interesting you say that too because it's like mike talked about on an episode of the night shift which is mike's show you guys should check it out it's fucking hilarious one of my favorite things to watch on youtube he was talking about the fact that sometimes he'll get dms from girls and if they don't have a blue check or a high follow count like he doesn't give a shit that's so fucked up i'm saying but it's like but if you think about it's like if you do get a dm from someone and they do have a blue check mark instantly you're like oh they must be important. I want to see what they have to no, say. No, I, I refuse to stoop to that. So you're telling me if someone DM'd you that had a check mark or a high following, you wouldn't be more intrigued to see what they sent you? I would look at it, but yeah. I, would, I would treat them everyone, well, that's, everyone the same. Exactly, exactly. That's my point. Like I, I don't value following over anything else, but obviously if you see a message from someone that has that verification, you're like, oh shit, Like what is this? It immediately catches your attention. The verification, I swear, this is my theory, is like a cult. There, there's people that obviously pay to get verified like you mm. straight up can pay to get verified i would do that you, where do you, i go you can where do i go direct me to the salesman all right we'll have a little chat do you actually know how <laughs> no but I, I i've been listening to some podcasts that talk about it you're and, leaving me hanging no thank you um, yeah i'm down but anyway like i feel like it's such a cult and that like it's all about who you know and mm. it's so fucking cherry picked it's and uh... some people are blacklisted it's so weird if you think about like because what is it based off of? <laughs> like, it is weird. Like, you'll have some reporters that are verified at, like, 300 followers. And then you'll see some YouTubers that have 3 million subs that still aren't verified. Yeah. I don't get it. It's, um, it's a cult. It's a fucking... It is. It's a, it's a club that you're not invited to. It is lit, though. I know you were on this weird wave. Not weird wave, but this wave for a while where we were talking about verification. And Phil was like, fuck it. I don't give a shit. I'm going to make it cool to not be verified. Yeah, I am. I am. <clears throat> and I was like, If I get verified, me. I'm going to be pissed off. I'm going to make it my goal to not be verified. I wouldn't be pissed off. I would fucking go I'm gonna out that night. I'm going to lead the fucking army of the unverified. <laughs> I would love to be verified. So if anyone from Instagram or Twitter are watching this, yo, hit me up. I'm declaring war against the blue check marks. Remember how fucking pissed everyone got when YouTube almost took away the verification badge from a lot of creators? Yeah. That was fucked up. That was crazy. It was pretty stupid. And they actually... Li- I have to sneeze. They <laughs> listened and they... Bless you. They listen and they uh, they gave it back to a lot of creators, which is here's, awesome. Here's the difference. This is why it might have just sounded hypocritical what I just said. Like, mm. well, I would have been pissed if they took away my verification mark on YouTube. YouTube has literally, if you hit a hundred thousand subs, you get the check mark. Yeah, like ninety nine percent of the time, yeah. correct? On Instagram and Twitter, there's no it's threshold. fucking bumblefuck. They're like, eh, you might mm, possibly on this Tuesday if it's a lunar eclipse. Will consider you being yeah. verified. It's interesting too because I mean, there's really no debating this. If you have a verified badge, it's much better for you when it comes to working with brands and stuff like that, and collaborating with other people. Exactly, they can see your messages. Yeah. And on top of that, I actually didn't know this till recently. If you're verified on Instagram and you leave a comment, your comment gets thrusted to the top. Oh, absolutely. Which is that's sick for growth. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That it's kind of like a shitty dystopia because these companies are deciding who's worthy and then those people it's just like the rich get richer the fucking more popular mm. get more popular we're gonna be verified by the end of this year so I don't know why you're <laughs> bugging out bro and when you get that blue tick I wanna see you sit on this podcast and say if I get the blue tick I'm deleting my Instagram don't say that <laughs> don't say that Phil why not oh, you're, almost, you're almost at 60k on Instagram right yeah but like I don't even post so it doesn't matter yeah you haven't been I really haven't been posting either I post on my story a lot I literally just used like the Philly on Instagram to just promote my YouTube videos facts we should take an Instagram tonight. It's been a while. Both of our Instagrams we, we blasted one. out. Because mm. you know what? I'm feeling good. My beard's looking nice tonight. I'm going to have all my dancing shoes. I'm tempted to delete Instagram. Like my personal one. Really? Yeah. Because I, I delete the app off my phone on like a daily basis because I'm like, eh, I'm getting too attached to it. I spend too much time on here. I don't give a fuck about what people are eating for the day and shit like that. Like you see some dumb shit sometimes. I got to tell you, I have a similar, and you're going to, be blown away by me saying this because you know how addicted i am to social media instagram i love twitter though i could probably say if i didn't need twitter to interact with my audience and entertain them and and just stay up to date with my other friends at work on twitter 
Twitter to me was always my favorite app. Yep. I I'm getting to the point where like I just can't take it anymore. Like right. legit, there are days where I do want to delete the app because it is a cesspool. <laughs> It just gives everyone an opinion, and there are these opinions that I just don't give a fuck about and I don't want to see on my timeline. Mm-hmm. Like, every day, this political shit, controversial shit, fucking this person's getting exposed, that person's getting fucking outed, this person did this. <laughs> I'm just like, yo, this nauseating. is giving me so much anxiety. I just want to see what my friends are doing, my favorite creators. I want to laugh. Like, I don't want to see, you know, all these retweets about a fucking political debate right now. Like, that's not <laughs> what I want to see on Twitter. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to see it. And it gets me to the point sometimes where I'm like, yo, I fucking hate this app. I really do. Twitter does face some like very large issues. If you've ever yeah. seen uh, Jack Dorsey on Joe Rogan's Joe Rogan's podcast, yep. Joe got fucking destroyed by his fans for not pressing him the first time. Yeah. And then he brought on like his like assistant or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And like they were doing all this PR bullshit. But Twitter can literally be used as like a political weapon. Oh, it's crazy. It's like they are kind of responsible for a lot because that's where public discourse happens now. Yeah. Like most of it. No, like yeah, all of it. All yeah, literally and, and, 95% of it. And the when problem. there's not clear like guidelines yep. or like equality because they do cherry pick people to cancel and shit like that. Some people are just straight up like deplatformed and it's like who the fuck is Jack Dorsey or Twitter to decide who can Yeah. if you're if you're an app for open discourse like that. It's also crazy too because I'm sure the people that made Twitter never knew in a million years it would be the center for public discourse mm. where like they have to set precedents and there's nothing to follow. Yeah. Their decisions affect the rest of the social media platforms as well. It's so crazy. Like Twitter really is like the heartbeat of all social media. But it's also so dope. Like I love going on Twitter and seeing something funny and retweeting it and sharing it with my audience and just waking up and, you know, saying good morning to everybody and shit like that. But it's like when you see all this negativity, it's like the news because I hate watching the news because every fucking story is negative. There's like one happy story. <laughs> yeah. It's like I, I can't I can't keep getting like sucked into this fucking black hole that is Twitter sometimes, man. It drives me bananas. That's how I feel about Instagram. See, Instagram to me is just because you know what it is? You can't repost something. In other words... If I'm following you on Instagram, I'm only going to see your photos. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the problem with Twitter sometimes is like I could be following you and you could have strong opinions on topic X and your whole timeline for the day is just... (laughs) And I'm just like, yo, and fucking yeah, like, I don't and... want to see this. <laughs> and I'm just constantly scrolling. Occasional I, I... porn on Twitter. Oh, like... Yeah, Twitter is uh, very unsafe when you're in public too. Sometimes you just <laughs> click a, a fucking picture and all of a sudden a dick or tits pop up and you're like, I a am sausage. in public right now. What the yeah. fuck? That's another thing too. A lot of people on my timeline keep retweeting dicks. I don't want to see dicks all day. I'll I've be honest with you. I've seen a lot of dicks in my life. Yeah. I'd rather I I'd like to keep that number on a steady decline. I just I, I just got to see my dick. My dick is cool, mm. you know. Big yeah. fan of him. <laughs> I like to appreciate the art. Or That's is the it, second or is it time. a her? Is it a her? Nah, he's a dude. Oh, okay. His name's uh Rick. Rick, Rick the, the dick. dick. <laughs> hey yo, you love hey. to see it. Now, one thing I have to tell you uh, before we get to the tail end of the podcast here is that people have been begging me to ask you, what is your hair care routine, right, I got guy? you. I got you. Okay. So lay it on the fucking line right So now. it depends on your hair type, right? Oh. Everyone thinks when you're growing out your hair, like there's like one thing to follow. Basically, you don't want to over shampoo your hair because shampoo strips the natural oils you taught me that. from your scalp, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if you're a very greasy person, your scalp produces a lot of grease, you might have to shampoo more than someone else. But there are things called no poo, which means you literally don't shampoo Ooh. because there are a lot of chemicals if you don't, you know, do your research and get proper shampoo that will just make your hair shitty. Like mm. it'll strip all the natural oils and you'll be walking around with like frizzy hair. And I'm not saying I walk around with fucking luscious locks all the time because, you know, sometimes I'm lazy. But basically, I shampoo probably about like once every f- four days, depending on... Holy shit. I've gone like weeks without doing it. See, I... I- Took your advice because I was shampooing every shower and I shower sometimes two times a day, yeah. most of the time, two times yeah. a day, like after a workout and then before bed. Um, but yeah, I was now I do every other day. As long as your scalp is getting washed with like cold or cool water, you're kind of clean. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? There's a big like misunderstanding. Unless you're doing like fucking sprints in the <laughs> or warding in a cold <laughs> yeah. coal mine, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that. Like, yeah, you should probably shampoo. Yeah. Like, water is sufficient, and it does clean your scalp. Got you. Um, yeah, so I shampoo about, like, once every three to four days. Sometimes maybe a little longer. Sometimes maybe a little less, depending on how I'm feeling. And then it's very important to condition. I condition, like, every day. 
See, I, I've been doing that, but the problem that I'm running into lately, and I don't know if it's just I'm not washing it out, but I literally, I sit there grinding it out, like straight up. But conditioner? When I, when I put in conditioner, dude, I use this head and shoulders conditioner. I don't use this. This is just on the table for show. <laughs> but I use this fucking head and shoulders shit, and then for the whole day, my hair, it feels like it's in there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a little like, not sticky is not the right word. It feels like slimy kind of <laughs> i know the feeling it's weird yeah you gotta wash it out more like i don't know dude i legit i'm sitting there like fucking mm. you know hardcore getting it out but it does make my hair stay back mm. when i shampoo it's impossible yeah it'll just go right forward like bangs <laughs> when i sh- when i condition it i put the comb through it and it stays flat perfectly okay so the next important thing is getting the proper products for your hair Facts. you want to stay away from parabens you want to stay away from sulfates this man knows his shit so you want a sulfate paraben free shampoo I go with Diva Curl because I have naturally curly hair and it accentuates it and it's like great list of ingredients. Mm. And you know, you got to treat your hair right. So then, um, so I'll hit it with a low poo or no poo Diva Curl shampoo. That's what it's called. Like no poo or low poo. Lit. Right. Once every three to four days. I use the Diva Curl one conditioner almost every day because I can't brush my hair unless it's properly conditioned. It literally like... I'll get an arm pump trying to get the knots out. It's insane. Holy shit. Yeah. So condition every day. And then when I get out of the shower, I'll brush it out. So it's all nice and straight, slick back. And then depending on what I'm feeling, I'll slap in some argan oil, some coconut oil, or some Diva Curl <laughs> curling gel. Damn. Yeah. This is a process. Yeah. You want, you want, you want, you also want to get a nice leave in conditioner. I use, I'm pretty sure it's called like, that's a 10 or something like that. Do you, do you blow dry your hair every day or is it just wet no, dry? Wet dry. Got you. Yeah, because I you hair guys dry, know I'm rather. I'm trying to uh I'm trying to grow my hair out right now and it's it's getting long. You can start to see the wisps coming out when I wear hats and shit. Um I just I'm at this point where I don't, I can't really do a lot with it mm. and it's kind of stressing me out. Like we thought we were in the I we thought I was in the awkward stage like a month ago. No, no, no. This is awkward stage. When, so when I came here today, your hair was looking like nice and windswept. It was a good look. Uh, yeah, you you liked it. I, I maybe just because it's different for me. I can't wait till I'm able to do the bun. The bun's going to be like the greatest thing <laughs> I ever. Can't, I'm trying to picture it. I haven't seen you with a f- long hair I'm, ever. I'm close to the bun action. I'll tell you that Hell much. Hell yeah. I'm pretty, not a bun, but like I can almost put it in like a little ponytail. But it's fun like trying a new look and stuff. And everyone around me is like, fucking cut it. And I'm like, no. Like, no. I need to stay consistent Fuck here. Off. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it's been uh, quite the journey. Yeah. So I, if I were you I would, or anyone that wants to grow out their hair, I would, get, I would learn what type of hair type you have. And then get like the proper products and don't be afraid to spend money because some products are expensive. Yeah. But, you know, if you want your hair to look like very good and healthy, then you need that premium cost for the that's premium it. look. Maybe that's I it. remember at, at the barbershop I go to, they have a sign that says good haircut. Good haircuts are not cheap and cheap haircuts are not good. Dude, That's really you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, before we move on from like the uh, hair stuff, I started using beard oil. Mm-hmm. I don't have any in right now because we were, I just literally took a shower before the podcast started because I needed to wake up. I was so tired today. Been grinding all day, by the way. Super productive day. I love shit like that. And I got this beard oil from my friend Dobbs. He said it to me for my birthday. Dude, I'm going to rock it tonight. You'll <laughs> see the difference. It just makes your beard look so much healthier. Glistening, glistening clean, beautiful. It smells nice. It's the same shit with proper hair products. It's fucking sick. I will never not use beard oil ever again and uh i don't know why i just said end up because i just wanted to talk about the fact that 50 cent got his star on the hollywood walk of fame did you really yeah eminem spoke for him that's sick he had a great introduction uh induction speech rather it was fucking awesome tomorrow's the super bowl bro i don't even know who's in it yeah i'll tell you right now the picks that i did not choose the 49ers are in it right 49ers and the kansas city chiefs what a shit name dude yeah, Kansas City I, play, I play for the 49ers. Well, listen, man. <laughs> we call man. the fucking 69ers. Oh, got him, <laughs> Gorsh. <laughs> no, but seriously, this game's going to be sick. And I I think it was two podcasts ago I did my picks, and they were completely wrong. Bro, I thought I, it was going to be, I'm pretty sure I said, I think I said, I don't even remember what the fuck I said, <laughs> but I didn't pick these two teams. I do think, though, I'm going to put my picks in right now. I think the 49ers are going to win. All right, I'll side with that. Do you even, do, what if <laughs> I... I what if I just picked the worst team ever? You didn't even I realize don't it. understand how people sit down and watch football. Like, it literally boggles my mind. Are we going to watch tomorrow? Are you down to do something for the Super Bowl? Perhaps. Have some drinks, chill Maybe. out. It'll Depends. be a fun time. Depends how I'm feeling. Depends on the, the dangle of the angle. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be so hungover tomorrow. I can already t- <laughs> I just I just know my mentality right now. Why are we degenerates? We're not degenerates. We haven't drank in three weeks. We're mm. not degenerates. Here's here's the, the mentality I always have when I go out. It's either going to be, and I know this pretty much by the time I wake up that day. 
either a chill night where we're all going to have small talk conversation, some camaraderie, maybe one or two shots, chill. Nine times out of ten, it's the, hey, it's been a minute. <laughs> Let's fucking rage. I feel I'm, that. I'm ready for a fun time tonight. Very ready. Okay. Uh, I'm with Are it. Are you ready? Yes. Dude, I commit to shit. Yes, we do. I just We both have been doing great at that, by the way. Yeah. But like if people give me plans, right? These days I'm like, fuck yeah, hundred percent, let's go. Yeah, let's buddy. do it. And if people aren't matching that energy, it throws me off. Throws you off. Like, come on. You got one life, buddy. Wake up. Wake up, buddy. Wake up, buddy. Yeah. If you if if you're wasting time, time's gonna waste you. That's Ooh. It. That's that's, a, that's like the haircut thing. That's, yeah, that's, that's clean. That's, that's that's a quote from Muse. I like that. Muse is a band, right? Yep. They're a, a British rock band. I'll be honest, I've only been listening to Eminem. Like, legitimately only. The Muse is probably the best music to run to. Yeah. I'm standing by that. I would argue that. It, no, 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 no. I've never heard it. I gotta I put you hiccups, on to some Muse. Yeah, please do. Nuts. You know what we gotta do this week? What do we gotta do Let's this make week? a vlog this week. No okay. more bullshit. By the way, in the last episode, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm gonna throw us under the bus because I need to talk about this. One of us grabbed the lens. It was probably me because I'm <laughs> greasy as fuck. There was like a smudge above my face mm. the entire last episode. I tried my best to hide it with some sharpening and shit. I couldn't do it. We're like, what the fuck is this smudge? And we looked at the camera, big ass thumbprint. It looked like someone took chapstick and just fucking... It was disgusting. So yeah, we cleaned it for this episode. But what I was going to tell you is I, I want to come back hard with vlogs. What I'm probably going to do is get the... I can't remember the exact name, but I use the Sony a6400. That's, that was my vlog camera, the camera you're, you're right. watching on watching this on right now that was uh, filming this. I want to get the A7S Mark III, I believe. It's like the top of the line Sony camera. It's, it's mirrorless. It's fucking, you got to get a separate lens for it. It's beautiful. It might be the Sony. There's Sony A7S Mark II, and then there's Sony they just A7R made them, Mark III. I think they just made the A7S Mark III. I could be wrong, though. I'm pretty sure I saw it at Best Buy, but this thing is a machine. Literally a machine. Yeah, yeah look there, at that. there is no, Sony Alpha A7 III. Yeah, that thing is sick. I think I might pick that nope. up. There is the A7S III. There we go. I, I think it recently came out, too. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Let's see. He's doing his research, folks. Uh, don't quote me on this. It says, like, what we can expect about yeah, the Yeah, What do we want to see from the Bro, this is what I'm telling you. Like, the, these fucking blog posts that everyone decides are a good idea to fucking put, right? It's like... Before we talk about the Sony A7S Mark III... <laughs> fill out a survey! Fill out a survey. <laughs> turn off ad blocker. No, it's like, before I got into photography, my mother was... <laughs> they go into these backstories that nobody cares about. It's like, ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. I just want to know if the goddamn camera's out. Yeah, I couldn't... But even... anyway, I want to get a new camera, and I want to keep this as just the podcast station, and then uh, I'll get a, another camera to be the vlog station. I've been talking to my boy Brooks. He's my editor for all my Pokemon stuff. I was like, yo... I'm going to film a bunch of footage this week. I'm going to send it to you. Let's see if you can make this vlog come to life. If I like what I see, I'm just going to film. You're hired, kid. I'm going to film footage every week. Send it to Brooks. There we go. It's going to be it's going to be lit. Vinny Vlogs coming back. Vinny Vlogs. Coming back very soon, ladies and gentlemen. It was so fun doing the vlogs. I just didn't organize it properly because I would film everything Thursday, edit Thursday night to post for Friday. It was way too much work in yeah, one dude. day. You gotta which space it I up. have no idea how, you know, Jesse Wellens at one point, Logan Paul... Um, all these uh, daily vloggers did it because, dude, it's it's insane. Money. It's insane. If you had money coming in like they did. Well, regardless of the money aspect. I, would, just the, I wouldn't sleep. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's the thing. A lot of them didn't sleep because literally, you think about it. You have to film of, of you have to film footage every day. Build a story, edit it, upload it, make a thumbnail, make the description, make the tags, post it. Go to sleep, wake up, do that every day. I'm pretty sure Logan did it for a whole year, which is did, fucking did ridiculous. Did they have editors? Logan did get an editor eventually, yeah. His, his editor, Hayden, which is a really, he's a really cool dude. That definitely eases the load for sure, mm -hmm. but still, you have to, you have to make sure what you're filming can, can create a cohesive story. Like, if you're just like, I'm if going here, good, yeah. I'm going there, now I'm going here, now it's a nap time, now I'm going here, like, our vlogs, we were just going to Best Buy, <laughs> we were just walking around Best Buy, but they still had an arc, like, these summer nights, you know, <laughs> I, I love those fucking videos, man. I'm so excited to bring them back. We had a boss battle in a few of them. We did. Um, I don't, I don't know what that means. That's we did have a around. boss battle. I want to verse you in smash. 
Bring it on. <laughs> Let's fucking... My Captain I, Falcon is... I literally said, yeah, we did. And I was trying to think about when did we do a boss battle. And then you said I just made it up. And I was like, oh, yeah, he did. I don't even know what the fuck this guy's <laughs> talking about right now. Yeah, wait, why are you agreeing with me just to agree, buddy? I agree. And then I was going to register and try to figure it out. But I couldn't because you're just making shit up on our podcast now, Phil. <laughs> but this week, come over. Let's let's go live. Okay. Um, in, my, in my studio, we'll do a Smash Bros stream. Vinny versus Philly on And I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> Bro, it's not going to happen. You beat me last week because I didn't have my pro controller. Right. This guy was making me use a GameCube controller. I didn't fucking like it. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> There's a little bell over the place. Mm. We forgot to have a grandmother of the week again. That's okay. Next week. Next week. We fucking got you guys. Keep sending them in. Sunday Sauce Podcast at gmail.com. And Phil, if, if you're good, I'm good. Anything else you'd like to say? Anything else, anything else you'd like to cover? I think we covered it all this week, buddy. I think we tucked in this episode nice with a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Have some sweet dreams and uh, say hello to your grandmother for me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this episode of Sunday Sauce. If you did enjoy, hit that like button. Subscribe. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Send in your grandmother's photos with a blurb about her life. We love you dearly. We'll see you next Sunday at noon. Enjoy the Super Bowl, by the way. Have a great time today. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Scooby-Dooby-Doo. Where are you?